Hey everyone, hope you all had a wonderful DEF CON, those of you who made it out. I am utterly exhausted. Uh, sorry, you know, getting a video out late is a pretty common thing post Black Hat, post DEF CON. I had a great time. I'll be doing a lot of follow up with my, you know, like top five best things I saw, top five lamest things I saw. I am fortunately not uh, popping hot for COVID. That's one of the lamest things we saw, wasn't it? Low, you know, number of people testing positive. Please. If you haven't tested, I encourage it. Tell your friends, tell people you were rooming with, sleeping with, making out with, in talks with, in cars with, if you have a positive test. I definitely got sick uh, Monday, man. Monday, I got like a stomach bug, which was also going around a number of people. I don't know if people just aren't handling food correctly in some of those Vegas kitchens, but I was sick as a dog with, um, yeah, the bathroom. bathroom got a lot of my attention on Monday, but I'm ship shape now. And as far as this DEF CON goes, there were a number of things that were rather, rather significant. One of which kind of harkens back to some things we've seen in years past, maybe. So those of you who know me, I've been around for a long time, right? I, I was there at DEF CON 9 at the end of that when Dmitry Sklarov, the Russian programmer, got arrested. Obviously, uh, loads of you know that following DEF CON 25, my wife and I uh, were involved when Marcus got arrested. Uh, but this year, there was another incident involving another Dimitri. Some of you may have seen this video making the rounds on social media of a guy being sort of like dragged off a stage by DEF CON goons. And people are saying, hey, what the hell happened? And this is something to do with the DEF CON badge. What's happened? Is this like Alexis Park all over again? That's what this video is going to be about. This video is about the DEF CON badge this year and some stories around it. And just to be clear, this is going to be mostly positive. I love the badge. I had a good time with it once I got mine working. I know many other people who, who had a great time with theirs. The fact that DEF CON can put together such an epic project year after year as the electronic badges and consistently be pretty good at it is wonderful. But it doesn't always go perfectly. Let's talk about what could have been better. To properly understand the DEF CON badge story this year, you need to know all the key players. So on the DEF CON side, that's going to be principally Mar, Mar and the rest of the art team. Mar is amazing and has contributed tons of effort over the years to both the uh, fine art at DEF CON and the electronic art at DEF CON. And Mar was tackling the badge project this year. Now to do an electronic badge, uh, you know, you need, a, you need additional help and so forth. And because the, the plan was to, you know, work with kind of a Raspberry Pi circuit and the, the brand new, actually, the RPi 2350 chip was in the mix. You, you, like, the capabilities of this chip are pretty wild. The idea was, let's do a Game Boy emulator, which everyone's like, that's freaking crazy cool. Can we pull it off? So for those who don't know, if you like reach out to RasPi and say, hey, we have this pretty cool idea. We think your technology can, can be involved. Can you help us? Raspberry Pi isn't like going to engineer a project with you. They'll say, no, well, we make our chips and we make, you know, our platform, but we have a bunch of trusted, you know, partner firms, right? We have strategic partners and we refer work out to them. So one such firm that was involved this year was a company called Entropic Engineering. So Entropic was contracted originally. Contracted? Will we say contracted? It's a little, little fuzzy on whether or not some th some documents were signed, because again, it, it's fast paced. You're, you're, it's a project with a very adventurous timeline. This goes all the way back to January, so they had half a year. But even then, if you've seen the badge, like that's earth shatteringly crazy to make thousands and thousands and thousands of a finished working platform. But Entropic was involved, and an additional person, Dimitri Grinberg. So this is a programmer, I believe, from Texas, who does not work for DEF CON, also does not work for Entropic but had been, I guess, working with some of their engineers on the idea of using the new you know, Raspberry Pi chip to do a Game Boy emulator. And when they said, hey, there's this Game Boy emulator idea that DEF CON might be playing with, Dimitri kind of got looped into some of those discussions. Tackling a big project with a huge time crunch can lead to communication breakdowns. And ultimately, that's really what happened here. 
I mean, in the end, when projects are very adventurous, if not everyone is sort of rowing the boat in the same direction, or if they are thinking, hey, I got to move really fast. I can't wait for this person to get back to me. Sometimes messages get missed. And here at Red Team Alliance, we had our own version of this. You're going to get kind of two stories in one on this video here. So those of you who came out on our party on Thursday evening, so the, the Red Team Alliance party was just epic, man, just epic. So as every year, ever since we've had this amazing facility, we kind of have an open house, right? We bring a bunch of people in, food, drinks, uh, the taco truck was banging this year in the parking lot, wasn't it? And in addition to a bunch of mini games and mini challenges like the Underdoor Tool Challenge and the Keymaker Challenge, the big, big challenge this year was called Red Team Rush. Red Team Rush was showcasing a huge modular build out in the back of our warehouse. So part of the reason we love this facility is that we've been constructing this series of posts and stanchions and basically movable wall panels so we can reconfigure based on client training needs, a whole space back there with different doors, different access control systems. We can remake anything you want. If you want to be Danny Ocean with a crew making a replica of a vault you're breaking into, like we can build it here. And we were going to showcase that at the Red Team Rendezvous event. And to do this, again, like we we had this kind of laid out for a while, but we had to bring in a crew. We like, you know, I'm not a general contractor. So we had a work crew here for weeks and weeks before, you know, August hit. And was it too adventurous? Wouldn't have been for some people. It wound up being too much for this one crew. Uh, you know, their sort of communication was slipping here and there, and there were budget overruns, and there were, you know, hey, didn't you do this thing? Oh, we didn't do that thing. Ultimately, uh, maybe I'm tipping my hand a little bit here. I remember a few weeks back, I had just gotten into town. Uh, I was dead tired, and I get this call from from Bobic. I was in town for Aloha, basically, the locksmith show. And Bobic's like, hey, are you, are you in town right now? I said, yeah, I, I just got here. He's like, I need you to do me a favor. I'm so sorry. It's like very early in the morning. Can you please go over to RTA? I need you to go to the work crew who's there, collect all their access control badges for the facility, tell them thank you, but we're stopping work. Watch them gather their tools, take them over to the Airbnb. We rented them and watch them pack the Airbnb. We are, we are done with, with this crew. It's not working out. And it's a hard call. It's a stop work call like that is never easy to make. Uh, Pulling that ripcord, usually there's a lot of things that have just, you know, like, hey, we've reached a breaking point. And that's ultimately what DEF CON did with Entropic Engineering. Uh, both they and Entropic have put out statements, and I'll, I'll link, you know, some stuff about it. The Register had a good article about this. And ultimately, DEF CON says, like, look, we had budget overruns. There was bad communication. Things were getting missed. Mar and the art team were getting left out of a lot of decisions and they were saying, hey, please, you know, please reply all to this email chain. And someone would say, well, no, we can't write this. We're just talking engineering stuff. And they're like, well, wait, you're talking, wait, did you drop that feature? Like, do, are we doing LEDs? Are we not doing LEDs? Well, this is just engineering chatter. And, you know, they were, DEF CON was saying, look, you can't just unilaterally do that. I realize you might think our project's not feasible, this feature of it or that feature of it, but it is our project. Like, we're still the ones hiring you. So I can't imagine it was an easy decision for DEF CON to just kind of say, no, you know what, stop, stop everything. Give us all our materials back. Thank you for playing. Um, get us an invoice of what you think you're owed. We'll try to reconcile that when we can, which is, again, very similar to how we had to deal with our work crew. Uh, immediately, immediately from the stop work conditions here, the work crew was like, hey, uh, if we're leaving town, well, I need money for to change my flight. And someone guy was like, I ripped up my sneakers. There was a you know bolt sticking out of the ground. And I had to buy new shoes. And I was like, so you weren't wearing like OSHA safety gear on a work job site? You're just, what are you doing? But it's, there are some people who just don't seem perfect at business sometimes. And one of the things we kept telling our work crew, we're like, if you want to get paid, you know, for what you've done, because they did work, get us a big boy invoice with all the line items in one place. And we will reconcile that against all these other costs and penalties like the cleaning and fines of the Airbnb that they smoked in and trashed and all the broken stuff and materials that they overran. And like, we will reconcile that 
and then pay you like a big business. Because you don't play that game where this guy says, I get owed $275, and someone else says, well, I'm owed $38.87. And so, but this guy said he was going to pay you that. No, he didn't pay me that. You're not playing the text message number game. You say, just give us a sheet, and we will reconcile it. And if you disagree with our numbers, the courts are at your disposal. And it seems that, you know, Entropic was a little stung and surprised that DEF CON yanked them off the project, which is their right to do as the customer. Where it gets weird is not that the badge project actually happened at all. That's actually epic. In fact, hacker ingenuity and the community coming together, uh, other people on DEF CON's team, Joe Grand and others, like literally came through at the 11th hour, super clutch, and kept working on these badges to get them to delivery, right? That there was the Vietnam fabrication, they shipped, they got here. Everyone got badges at DEF CON. The electronic badges were working to various, you know, like the, the stock game that was built in the badge worked. There were some little quirks with like reading to the SD card and loading other files, but those were getting addressed throughout the con. There was literally live updates happening on the fly. No, the weird part, and this is what gets us to that video that many of you have seen. Dimitri put extra code in the badge with like a hidden screen that was saying like, hey, props to Entropic, you know, you deserve full credit for what you did. And I'm, you know, you haven't fallen from grace, go Entropic Engineering. And he threw in this, like that little, like if he just popped a screen that was like, lol, can't keep a good hacker down, that might be forgivable. But it was a screen with a Bitcoin address that said, you know, we never got paid. And it was kind of like begging for money. And it was Entropic Engine. You know, he wasn't like trying to take money for himself. He was trying to get money to Entropic. But that's a super bad look, right? DEF CON's an expensive conference. Attendees pay nearly $500. And then to get like sapped for more money. And that, that just, it's really shitty. So I understand DEF CON's decision when the badge talk was going to happen to pull Dimitri. And, and Dimitri had rubbed a number of people the wrong way. They, again, there's a lot of queer and BIPOC people who were on the project. And the, some things he said, I understand, caused a lot of friction with them. But that's what ultimately happened. DEF CON had to make the decision at the last second when they became aware of this hidden screen. They said, do we want this guy on stage at all? And I understand, like, censorship is bad. I understand most people feel that way. And they say, no, you never, you got to let someone talk, man. Could DEF CON have handled it a little bit better? Could they have said, hey, man, uh, if you want to get up there and talk about the project, we got our eye on you. But if you mention this stupid Bitcoin screen, we're going to cut your mic. Maybe they could have done that. But I think he made it very clear that it was his intention to spread word of that. And in fact, after he was removed from the stage, he held a little like hallway con sidewalk conference where he was spreading the news of this to anyone who would listen. So as I've said, folk have put forth sort of differing statements on the matter. And having been at the helm of some very complicated projects with very aggressive timelines, I'm inclined to give some serious weight to DEF CON's version, not just because you know, they're all my friends and so forth, but I've, I've been there. I've been there when a project kind of falls apart and you have to pick up the pieces and still deliver for people who need you. Uh, do I think Dimitri really could have done better? Yeah, I, I said, like, if he had just done a joke, lol gag screen, I think it would have gone over way better. Could DEF CON have done better as well? Uh, maybe. The, you know, if, they, if the optics were bad of like removing him from the stage, like, man, like he wasn't being manhandled, let's be, under, let's be understandable there. Could DEF CON have been more transparent about whether he was ejected or banned? That probably would have been good. Again, it was in the moment, it was a chaotic time, but there was all this talk of like, is he allowed back in? Is he not? Is he going to get arrested by police if he comes back in? It would have been nice if there was clarity for him uh, on that point and let alone other people. But a few key things to note, right? Like the badges ultimately do work. I eventually, I was frustrated, you know, like many people. I was like, oh man, my badge keeps breaking. I uh, can't read to the file. Once I got it flashed, once I got the SD, and some of the SD cards didn't work either because cheap SD cards are just like that. But once I got it working, I was thrilled and I had fun time. I hope many of you got yours flashed. Even if you didn't, I'm certain there will be community outreach to flash badges that didn't get flashed on site. There are now badges out there like playing Game Boy games, playing Doom. So hackers came through on that one. And Tropic put out a, among their statement, they literally said, we take full responsibility and ownership of any oversights or mistakes we made on this project. So they're owning up to that. 
And also, it's worth pointing out that Dimitri's statements I've read, he wasn't like dragged off the stage non-consensually. He basically was in the talks and he said, hey, if you want me to not be here, you have to physically remove me. And I, it, it was almost theatrical, right? Like he was participating because that's actually the goons aren't supposed to ever go hands on. The goons are like, you know, they're big, beefy folk. A lot of them have muscles, but they're not a security force in the sense that they can go hands on. Their main job is to intercede if there's immediate violence, but mostly to observe, report and refer to building security or to the police. So what you witnessed in that video really wasn't them acting out of role. It was sort of theatrically performative, all of them together. And, and they were all laughing about it. So that should be understood too. But in the end, yeah, I think it was an, an okay situation that was misunderstood because it's a chaotic time. Do I think the badge was fun? Yeah. Do I think Mar and the DEF CON team are great and Joe's work and all that went into it? Yeah. Do I think that the project could have gotten off the, you know, the ground even sooner? Maybe, you know, what was that old saying? Badges by Christmas, Jeff. Badges by, that's what Zach used to always kind of chant. And yeah, that's, you always want more time. You always want more time and, and more resources to do a really adventurous project. But this one came through. And as you'll see in my top five epic things about DEF CON, one of my favorite things was, of course, the fake badges. Because you look, you know, sometimes it's a it's an inert plastic badge and like those are going to get faked certain years. But you're like, well, this is an electronic badge. How could anyone, you know, well, that's really hard to, no, man, no, 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 no. I'll, the, especially props to the kids who figured out that the badges were shipped in these like plastic clamshell packaging and they started taking them out of the trash and basically making like a printed, like a paper printout of the circuit board of the badge and gluing it inside and making you know, fake badges. And the story of what happened to this one kid, it was, th the kid was epic and DEF CON's response was epic. Uh, I'll tell you more of it in my, my upcoming video. Uh, and not ultimately this person wants to maybe turn it into a talk or a presentation or something later on. So I won't spill all the beans, but hackers came through. I had a great time. Uh, the little push button, I, here's something, if anybody really wants to get involved, the little momentary push buttons, the switch buttons, were very sharp. They're not very comfortable. It's almost like maybe there were going to be additional injection molded parts that would go on, that would float on top of the, the A, B buttons and the D-pad. Maybe someone out there wants to do some 3D print designs and we can get ourselves some comfy buttons. That would be double cool. But that's for you to talk about in the comments or on Reddit or on the forums or on the Discord or you name it. That's the story of the DEF CON badge this year. A lot went into it, a lot went unpredictably with it, and a lot got fixed with it. I had a good time. I hope you did too. I hope you didn't get sick. Yeah, hope you got home well and sound and smiling and you got a little sleep. Until next con, until next time, until next place. Stay safe out there.